Okay, everybody, it's time for another Candlelight Tale. Uh, this is actually a story that a friend had recited to me several times. Uh, it was his own experience, and I'm going to share it with you. Um, this friend had gone through a divorce, was living in a small apartment, and really depressed. And he got news that his mother had passed, and he inherited his childhood home. Well, his childhood home was um, in 1950s a uh, tract house in the suburbs. And it was kind of in a weird location. It was on the edge of the, the uh, subdivision um, with open fields and forests, but uh, they were the last two houses on a cul-de-sac and really never felt like part of the neighborhood. But he figured, well, I've got the kids on the weekends, you know, maybe, you know, they can play and run around like I did. So it didn't seem like such a bad idea. Um, he started to move in. And uh, when he was moving in, he was watching the house next door that had the other really big lot. And um, he didn't see anybody, you know, coming or going. So he figured, you know, probably a dual working couple, you know, never home. Well, he's been there for about a week and uh, he hasn't run into any neighbors at all. You know, these, these people in this other house are, you know, they're either coming and going when he's not around or, you know, they're really private or what. Uh, so he's getting into his car one day and he looks over and out of the corner of his eye he sees the shadow go by the window upstairs and he realizes oh well they're home so he sort of dawdled around the front yard and you know took his time loading his car but they never came out so he figured oh crap you know this it's not that easy meeting your neighbors um, he remembered what the suburbs are like so he uh, goes about his business but that night he gets home from work and the phone rings and he picks up the phone and it's this man's voice and it's urgent and he says the man says uh, it's Bob next door uh, you gotta come over um, I've got I've, I've got what you wanted and so he goes okay and so he puts down the phone he figures maybe his mother had you know known Bob next door and he borrowed something or whatever so he goes over and he knocks on the man's door and there's nothing there no noise no movement, no answering. He keeps knocking and knocking. Finally he just gives up and he leaves. And he figures, well, you know, if it's important, Bob will just walk over next door and give it to him. Well, he goes to bed that night and uh, in the middle of the night he hears um, what sounds like a gunshot, really, really loud, you know, kaboom! And he sits up in bed, you know, and he's looking around and he, he realizes it's not in his house, but it's outside. So he goes and he runs to the window and he looks out and he's looking over at the neighbor's house and he hears the kaboom again and then he hear, he sees this flash of light really quick and it's the first light he's seen in the house the whole time he's been there. So he gets into his shoes and he puts on his robe and he runs next door and he's pounding on the door and he's pounding on the door and there's no answer, there's no lights, there's no sound, there's absolutely nothing. and. Um, so he goes back to his house and he picks up the phone and he calls the cops and he says, you know, there's, I think somebody's been shot. It sounds like somebody's been shot. So the cops come rushing, you know, in, in, like 10 minutes later or under 10 minutes, they're there. And uh, he goes over to the house with the police and, you know, he's, he's running across the yard telling them about what happened and they're rushing the door and, um, one of the another cop car pulls up and this cop car a cop gets out and comes over and says guys no you don't you don't need to even try and the cops look at the other cop like what and so this this other cop he says uh, this house is empty it's been empty for three months um, uh, Bob Novak killed himself there he shot himself and uh, <laughs> he apparently had tried to shoot himself the first time and and kind of I guess got scared and pulled the trigger let it shoot near his ear just to get used to what it was going to be like or maybe to get his courage up to actually shoot himself but it took two shots before he finally got himself in the head and died and the house had been empty it was locked it was there was there was nobody there there was nobody with access to the house so what this man had experienced, this friend of mine, was a reliving, basically, of the last moments of Bob's life. He had apparently called his mother and 
wanted to give her a bunch of things that he had that he just wanted to give away before he died and um, and some things that he had borrowed from her so he had gotten this call just like his mother had and hours later this man had shot himself so uh, it ended up that his only neighbor was a ghost <laughs>